Good morning and welcome to your Numar customer walkthrough of a 2024 Baystar Sport uh, floor plan 2813. Uh, we'll start up here in the front. As the driver, you will see on your left hand side a Equalizer Systems Smart Leveling. Uh, the leveling is for the jacks uh, to level the coach. Um, there is no air ride suspension on this coach, so uh, you won't need to make sure that the coach is uh, at ride height because it already is. To start the equalizer system jacks down, you'll need to engage the parking brake. That's the LED that's flashing now. The parking brake is a foot pedal here on the left-hand side of the column. Just push it down and you've engaged the parking brake. And you can see the engage brake light quit flashing so you're ready to auto level, which is here. So just press this auto level button and you can hear the jacks uh, going down. You can feel the coach as the jacks are leveling, uh, slight movement of the coach. In the event that you may be too far off level and the jacks wouldn't be able to level, you'll get the LED light that says excess slope. Um, but obviously, um, we're not getting that warning light, so we're just about level. And once we're level, you'll notice that the operating light went out and we're now in the level position. If you chose to move the left or right or the front or rear jacks independently, you can also do that with these buttons here, the manual push buttons. So uh, now we can turn the ignition off and our power off. And that is the way you auto level. Now, once we're ready to go and uh, leave the campsite or campground or wherever we're parked and have the jacks down, we'll just do the same in reverse. Make sure our power ignition uh, is on for the key. You see the ignition light is on. And then instead of hitting the auto level button, we're just gonna hit the all retract. And you can hear the jacks retracting. Obviously, before you hit the retract button, you just want to make sure to walk around the coach and make sure there's nothing uh, that you may have left uh, underneath or anywhere around because the coach will be coming slightly back down uh, in certain areas. And um, just want to make sure everything's clear of the baggage doors or any other things that you have around the coach. So all of our jacks are now retracted and um, we're ready to travel so uh, we could start the coach power out and you can refer to your equalizer systems operating manual for more information but that's the basics on leveling so moving forward of the equalizer we have our battery boost switch uh, what the battery boost does is if we get in the coach and we try to start uh, the engine and it won't start, we can hold this battery boost button down for about 60 seconds and that connects the house batteries to the chassis battery and then we'll be able to start the coach. And then we just release it once we've started the coach. And you only need to press that if you're having an issue with uh, the battery being too low to start the engine. Just to the right of that is our generator uh, start stop. You just hold that button down to start the generator. You can see it's priming. And there it started. And if we're finished with the generator, we wanna stop, just press the stop button. Uh, we have uh, overhead fans. Uh, in the cockpit area, one left, one right, and we have um, high and low 
and those are operated when the key is in the on position. So that's low, off, and high. We have our dome light. Um, dome light will come on even without the ignition on. And then, of course, we have our mirrors. Uh, just for the mirrors, is left. And then you can make the adjustment left and right or up and down for the mirror on the driver's side. And then to the right for the passenger side mirror. Um, just above that, we have uh, a, a switch which will light up red for the mirror heat. And that will defrost the mirror or get any moisture off the mirror if we leave that on. Um, if there is no moisture or frost on the mirror, we just can leave that off. There's no need to have that on. We have our hazard uh, lights here. If we press those, you can see our hazard blinkers come on. Press it again, and it turns them off. Uh, we have our phone charger here. We have traction control. And you'll notice here, um, if I have the key on, and I press the traction control, it turns on. Press it again, and the traction control is off. To the right of that, we have a dimming switch. Uh, on the left is dim, and on the right, you can see if I go towards the right one, then that makes my instrument cluster brighter. The center circular button here that you rotate is for your headlights. The first indicator is parking lights. You can see here as a green light or off. Parking light green, and then as you go to your headlight, you can see the headlight, excuse me, that would be fog light, that would be headlight, second one. The Dimmer switch is here. You can see the dimmer switch come on from the turn signal control. To turn them back off, just rotate left. You can see they'll go out. You can see on the top here of your miles, the traction control is off. As soon as I turn that back on, it'll show traction control on. Just below that, we have an auxiliary plug uh, for 12 volt and USB uh, for charging. If uh, you move up here uh, near the instrument cluster, just have your vents for heat and air uh, for the cockpit area um, here on your left and right of the instrument cluster. Uh, you can see here in the instrument cluster, uh, you've got your oil pressure gauge, your temperature gauge, your fuel gauge. and your temperature for your transmission. And then you have your RPM gauge and your uh, settings here. Um, you can go to different, uh, uh, you can scroll up for uh, miles to empty, uh, outside temperature, um, date, miles per gallon, um, you can also reset your odometer or timer just by holding down the trip reset for OK, and then that zeroes it out. Uh, you're back to zero and you're setting your time. Um, your gear shift indicator here, D obviously would be for drive. And then to the right over here is your miles per hour. Um, at the moment, we just have our ignition on, so it's showing uh, the engine, battery, and brake lights on. Uh, if we start the engine, you can see here that our parking brake is set. To release the parking brake, there's a lever here on my left by the column. Once I release that, then the parking light goes out. If I turn on my um, lights here uh, on the dial, you'll see that they come on. There's just our marker lights and there's off.
we'll leave the ignition on as we go through the other settings. We have our left turn and our right turn. We have our wiper washer here and the delay is adjustable here on the, on the um, turn signal. Um, we also have our bright and dim. You can see here to go to bright or dim, you just pull back. Uh, the instrument cluster here, again, that's just uh, the one in the center. Uh, you can scroll through your settings here. And you can go trip one or trip two. Um, you can go left or right. Just below that, you have your cruise control. Turn your cruise control on and off here, and you make the setting uh, for cruise here. Um, and resume. This is your uh, horn. Um, over here on your left, or excuse me, on your right, you have your uh, gear shift lever. If we start the vehicle and hold the brake down, then we can shift it into whichever gear we want. You'll notice here we have a, another uh, button on that lever uh, for towing. If we're going to be towing, we want to press that in. Uh, moving over to the right side of the column, we have our USB plug. And that, of course, you want to plug into your phone. Uh, once we're plugged into uh, the phone, um, then we uh, will see that uh, CarPlay connects. Um, in this instance, uh, the CarPlay connected to our um, maps and um, it shows the general area of where we're at right now. Uh, to scroll through different modes on your radio, you've got um, the select selections down here. You can scroll through the modes here. Um, uh, going back to the home page, you can see here um, that you can make your choices uh, for radio and tuning uh, is just touch. Um, if I scroll through the modes, you can see um, uh, I'm in CarPlay mode now. Um, if we had Sirius XM hooked up, we could go to Sirius XM. If you have an Android phone, you'd want to choose the Android mode. Uh, again, you can choose the radio. Um, but as you press the, each time you press the mode button, it scrolls to the next uh, selection. Like here we have camera. So once you select the camera, you can you can come down here to the camera button and you can change your view. So that is how you select your view. But in order to make the selection on the on the camera, you have to be in the camera uh, select. So right now, of course, we're in Apple uh, Play. Um, here's our Bluetooth. Um, USB, car information, uh, we don't have a signal there. We don't have our audio and video in right now. Equalizer is not the equalizer jacks we were talking about. It's the equalizer on your sound for your sound system and your speakers in the cab area. So we can make those slight adjustments here. Um, however, we like to tune our radio for play. Um, if we want to customize it, uh, there's different ways to customize. There's rock, jazz, electric, and pop. And you can refer to your owner's operator's manual um, for additional information. If you want to make a telephone call, that's obviously here on the left. There's a microphone. The microphone connects to your phone. The button that's labeled SD is for an SD card. You can just flip the lever up. There's an SD card here that you can insert for more storage. Um, again, that's your mode. You can change your band here if you're um, wanting to change your band from AM to FM. Um, there's also another USB port here. 
and that is the home screen here and you just make your selections here um, from your home screen then you just touch uh, the one that you uh, choose. Below the radio is uh, again your um, your selection for cameras here uh, the sh overhead shade for the front which is your power shade there's this button to open and close just to the right of that we have our um, cockpit air conditioning and heat or defrost uh, the key has to be on and then we can select the fan speed and the temperature setting here that we'd like. Um, the snowflake is for the air conditioning. Uh, when you depress it, you see the light goes out. If you want the air conditioner to be on, the blue light in this case has to be on, so you'd have to depress that. To keep the air circulating inside the coach, you'd want to have this button depressed where the amber light comes on. If you press that again and the amber light goes out, then you're pulling some air from the outside. So for max cooling, you want to leave that depressed so the amber light and the blue light is on at the same time. And then you want to adjust your temperature all the way to the left for cool or air conditioning. If you're wanting to defrost the windshield, obviously you'd want to turn that over to the right and then set this to defrost over here. Or you can choose a mix here for uh, defrost and floor or floor only or mix uh, or just out of the mid vents here to the uh, bottom left. In the front overhead, uh, we have three cabinets here um, for additional storage. You can see the, the fan wiring goes down to the fan on each side. Uh, moving uh, across uh, to the passenger side, uh, we have a small table that flips up um, uh, for the passenger. Uh, for map or reading or computer iPad, just lift it back up and it slides back down. Just to the right of the passenger side, we have additional uh, overhead map light. Uh, below that, we have a 120 volt plug. And uh, you'll see down here we have a LP detector. Um, uh, when it's uh, in operating mode, you can see it has a small green LED light, which means it's uh, connected. Just beside the passenger seat here, we have the uh, wall panel for ceiling, bathroom, bedroom, and accent lights. Uh, just by depressing the button, uh, you have control of your lighting in the rest of the um, areas of bedroom and bath. In the overhead above the entrance door, we have, starting on the left side, we have our battery disconnect. So if you're exiting the coach uh, for a period of more than a day, for instance, and you're gonna leave the coach in storage, you'd wanna turn this uh, red handle to the off position, and that will disconnect the batteries uh, from operating the coach and save you battery power. Um, that's back on. So now our battery disconnect is on. We can turn our overhead lights back on. The Xantrex is a charging system that helps keep your batteries charged. It also will give you power in the kitchen for the appliances that need to operate when you're dry camping. It's an inverter that will keep your refrigerator and microwave running. Those breakers are located on the sub panel. And those adjustments can be made here, and it can be turned on and off here as well. The screen shows you uh, the voltage of the batteries and what's going on as you scroll through. Just below that, we have our power control system. Uh, what this does is 
it tells you what you're plugged into. In this case, you're plugged into a 50 amp service. Um, if you're plugged into less than 50 amp, this uh, precision circuits uh, monitors the amount of power that's available and it will uh, scroll. It, as you scroll through here, you can see um, you've got your water heater powered, AC rear powered, but if for any reason there wasn't enough power coming in, uh, this will turn off those devices. It would turn off the water heater uh, first, um, then your air conditioner uh, in the bedroom next. As you can see now, we're on 50 amp service. Our short cord's plugged in and we have 50 amp service. If we were on a smaller service plug and we didn't have 30 amp and uh, let's say we only had 20, you would have to make the selection here where it says select uh, to choose a lower amperage of 30 or 20, otherwise you may trip a breaker. So remember, you may have to make the selection to a 30 or 20 here at the top of this screen. Just to the right of that screen is our wine guard. Uh, we can turn it on here and it automatically scrolls and will find uh, channels. Uh, it's found 10 air channels uh, that you could tune your TV into. If you want to make slight uh, selection uh, as far as tuning, uh, you can move uh, the uh, position of the tune up on the roof uh, by moving either one of those. Um, this searches for additional channels. If this is turned on, which it is now, it will not allow you to watch the cable or part cable that you can plug in near the shore cord. So remember that if you want to watch air TV, leave this on, but if you want to watch the part cable, then you'd want to turn this off and then you'd be able to watch the part cable. This is your slide out a control uh, for in or out. Just you have to press and hold that to make the slide room operate. Below that you have the step override. If I open my door, you can see the step goes out. And if I close the door, the step, you'll hear it go in. Now you hear it go in. So if I want the step to open and close with the door, I can do that. But if I want the step to stay out, I hit the step override. That way the step will always stay out even if I close the door. So that's our step override if you want to make sure the step always stays open. Just to the right of that, we have the awning lights, the LED lights for the awning. Um, you'll be able to see those when the awning is open. Um, the switch here uh, is for the water heater. Um, you've got water heater electric and gas settings. Uh, on the left is your electric and on the right is your LP gas. So when you want to turn those on, um, they will operate in electric or gas in the up position. If you have it on the zero position, those are off. Our carefree awning control is here. The lights for the carefree awning is, is over to the left of that. If you want the awning control to be turned on, that would be up. And now I'll be able to open and close the awning here. If I turn the switch off, then I won't be able to operate the awning open and closed. And that covers what we see in the overhead above the entrance door. To adjust the seat or armrests, uh, these are manually adjusted um, up or down. The seat adjustments are here for forward, 
and reverse and or tilt. To rotate the seat towards the living room area, there's a lever here. Just release that lever. Make sure your seat is uh, back far enough. Make sure that your steering wheel is tilted all the way forward. So that would be all the way forward. And then we can rotate our seat around. And just watch our clearance here. If we need to, we can move this down or we can move our seat forward or back to make sure we have clearance. And now we're facing the living room area. To move it back in position, just hit our release lever and turn it back around and it automatically locks into position. So to adjust our passenger seat, it's the same way with the armrest. They're manually adjust. Uh, to rotate the seat towards the living room area, there is a lever on the right hand side that you have to pull back. So I pull the lever back. Then the seat doesn't rotate like the driver one towards the center. It rotates the opposite way. So once you get that started, then you can stand up and finish rotating the seat around towards the living room area. Now, uh, it, it actually caught again here, so I wanna grab the lever. You can come around to the side again and just move the lever again and then rotate the seat around. So to operate the footrest, there's a lever on the left. Just pull the lever to release. And as long as the weight is going down, uh, your legs will be supported. Once you want to retract and put the footrest down, it's not a downward motion that makes it come down. It's actually a pull back slightly from this position. As soon as you pull back, it releases. As long as the weight is going up and down, it stays in position. But as soon as you take your heels, pull back just a hair, it will release and lock back into place. Then to store the chair back in the original position, you just have to find the lever here, and then you're gonna rotate the chair back around. And you can hear it lock back into place. So just behind the entrance door, we have our patio light. Uh, when we turn our patio light on the outside, it also lights up our step well. To operate our televator, just press the up button one time and release, and the televator will go up. So once you have operated your TV lift uh, to the up position, uh, you have your remote control, and you can turn your control on just with the up or on off button. I'll mute it. Uh, so the first thing you'll want to do is program your television to the air channels that are, are available. So to scroll to the channels so that they're in the TV memory for the location uh, that you're at, uh, because you're going to have to uh, scroll and uh, the, the antenna has to recognize the channels uh, that you're in that area, uh, you'll notice down here the three bars. So if you scroll with this over to the three bars, you'll see the gear icon, and that's what you want to choose uh, to go into settings. So once we go into settings, so you're going to want to choose broadcasting and then go to auto programming. And then you automatically scan and index the channels that are available. So then you would just press the center button with the arrow to auto program. And then it gives you the choice, press start to search and store channels. Yes, you wanna do that. On this coach, you can't do both at the same time. You either have to do air or cable because if you recall earlier in the video, we talked about the wine guard 
um, antenna receiver in the overhead above the door. If you have that set or turned on, you're only going to receive air channels on your TV through that. If you turn that receiver off, then you're going to be able to watch cable. So we're going to go ahead and select air. And you can, you can see it's uh, scanning for channels right now. And these are automatically storing those channels in your TV so that when you turn your TV off and then back on again later, um, those channels will still be there for you. So they found 40 channels. Um, if you scanned and didn't find but just a couple channels, um, you might want to make sure your antenna for the wine guard is turned on. Um, if it's on, and you still didn't get enough channels, you can just scan again. But if you've got this many channels, you can just hit close. And now uh, you can exit out of there uh, and you're ready to watch uh, regular TV. So press my home button. Um, because this television is new, um, you can use a range of smart services and features by agreeing to the terms and conditions. And uh, since this is a brand new TV, we'll let the owner uh, do that setup when he's ready. To scan in the same way for the cable, you have to go and do the same thing. You s select the bars down here. The gear icon press the center button, go back to broadcasting. <clears throat> Auto program, yes. But this time, instead of pressing uh, for the air, this time we want to press cable. But before we select the cable and press it, we want to turn the antenna off for the wine guard so we want this green button to be off. So we turn that off. Now we can select cable. And it will store the cable channels that it finds. We want to make sure we have our cable um, plugged in uh, back at the cord. Uh, at the cord door, uh, there's a cable connection that will show you where it's at. We have the AV cabinet, audio visual cabinet. Uh, these are the splitters. Um, these are not connected to any receivers or DVDs at the moment. Uh, it is prepped for satellite. Uh, we just, this coach was prepped for satellite. We didn't install any satellites at the moment. So everything is prepped. Numar uh, did provide in this coach the Wi Fi connection. This is the Wi-Fi router for the Wi-Fi Ranger. Um, it is Velcroed together, so if you need to look at uh, the password information is here at the top. Uh, the LEDs uh, indicate that it's powered on and powered up. Just to the cabinet to the right of the audio-visual is our our VBUS network for all of the lighting controls. You can look inside this cabinet and you can see all the lighting control module boards um, when they're operating any particular light function switch. The light is green beside that function if they need to be checked. So uh, just below our circuit breaker and panel uh, for our power is our main touch panel control. So it's a touch screen. To wake it up, you just touch it once and uh, the screen shows up here. Uh, you'll see they have uh, the selections uh, here at the bottom for each icon. Uh, starting at the left here is your home screen. At the home screen, it's going to give you uh, your basic uh, levels of your 
fresh gray black tank and LP if you have it, LP tank. Um, you can control your water pump and you can turn your lights on from this page. You can also monitor and watch where your house uh, battery and chassis battery voltages are. When you turn a function on or off, that press of that button to turn the water pump on, in this case, highlights that switch in red. So any switch that's highlighted in red uh, will uh, come on and uh, light up. The only ones that don't light up are the ones on the lights, the lighting controls. Anything else, if we press the button, it will go and change to a red color. Um, for instance, if we go to the AGS, which is our automatic generator starter, if we want that to be on, that function has to be turned on here with the um, on-off icon, and it has to be red. And same with any of the other buttons. If you want those to be set up, uh, they will um, be highlighted in red. So moving on to the, a to the HVAC uh, function, same thing. If we want those functions to be operating in the living room and we want to control those, we have to highlight that area red first and then we're controlling that part of the uh, coach. In this case, we're setting out the living room. We can adjust the temperature up and down here and the mode we can turn on and off. We can go through a setup uh, and we can run a program uh, for the air conditioner. Uh, we can set times uh, that we want it to operate. Um, we can set the week. Uh, at the lighting function again here, we can scroll to which uh, room in the coach we want to turn on and off. And then we can just press those buttons to turn it on and off. And that is the general overview for the touch panel. If you refer to your owner's operator's manual, uh, there will be more details on how to go through some of those settings and change them um, if you need to. So the sofa um, in the living room here folds out into a bed. If we just remove the pillows and pull the Velcro cushions off, We can lift up the back and then the front. And then there's a manual bar here that you have to lift up. And then you fold the back down. And there you have your fold up, fold out bed. Uh, just to store it, just everything is in reverse. So the dinette booth, um, it also folds into a bed. Uh, first thing you do is you remove the cushions out of your way. And after we've got the cushions out of our way, there's a release um, on the bottom of the table handle. Once you release the handle, the entire table will go down.
once we have the table down, then we just put our cushions back in place. And then there's a third cushion that goes in the center. So then we add our third cushion, which is usually stored in the back bedroom closet. There we have our additional bed. And to store it back in place, we have to do everything in reverse. Remove the cushions. And lift the table back up. Lock the lever. and then put our cushions back. Okay, so to operate the windows, uh, either side, uh, you just turn to open and they have a screen and then counterclockwise to close. Uh, the shade is manual, so the shade here, just grab a hold of it and pull down. And when you're finished, you can just push up to retract. Same with over in the kitchen. Uh, there is a string here uh, to lower and just lower it down. Uh, to retract, hold it to the right, pull up, and it locks. Uh, windows, the same operation. Open and close. Um, to turn the blinds once it's down, you can turn them here. Um, we have additional uh, space for cabinet here beside the microwave. The microwave plug is straight back here. So um, if you ever need to remove the microwave, you have to unplug it here. These uh, are all GFCI protected outlets. Just above the microwave is a ventilation uh, fan. Um, you just turn this to open, and then the fan will come on and off with a separate switch right over here. Just turn it on here, and then uh, that will pull air out of the kitchen area if you need to. Turn it off, and then just close the vent here by going counterclockwise. Uh, the microwave uh, comes to you uh, with uh, the glass turntable uh, tape so it doesn't uh, uh, bounce during transit. Uh, there's also the screen that you insert here on the bottom along with the, uh, the operating instructions inside. The range is LP gas. Uh, to light the range, uh, you would turn the selected burner on that you want, and then to ignite, uh, this is a ignition, is a piezo igniter, and it will light any of the burners that you uh, turn on. Uh, the pilot would have to be turned on and lit, if you're gonna use the oven side, you'd have to turn it to pilot first and hold that in and light it. And then you would turn it to the selected uh, temperature that you wanna bake. When you're finished uh, baking, then you wanna turn that off. Always make sure that these are in the off position um, when you are finished cooking. If you look straight back in the bottom here, you'll see uh, the area that the flame uh, is lit, and that's where you would need to light the pilot if you're going to use the oven. Just to the right of the range and oven is our storage. Uh, your coach comes with uh, touch-up paint. 
uh, remote control and TV control. This is for the awning. Uh, and of course, these are for your televisions. These are just empty drawers for storage. You have an additional large drawer at the base. Small drawer here. With every coach, you'll receive your owner's um, bag of all of your warranty and operating information uh, covering all of the functions and uh, appliances in the coach for from plumbing, heating, air conditioning, exterior electrical and appliances. All of your manuals are here. Um, your warranty registration cards are here um, and they should be filled out and mailed into uh, those manufacturers of your appliances. You'll notice here uh, at the base of the sink, our cold water lines are all de designated with the blue. Uh, the hot water lines are designated with the red. There's additional storage space here. Um, there's access here um, at the base. Uh, if this cover is removed for the hot water heater, the hot water heater um, has a bypass valve here. The bypass valve uh, is used to winterize the coach. So you'll need to turn that bypass valve on and off to winterize. This is just a floor register for the forced air furnace. And we have an additional 120 volt uh, GFC outlets uh, on both sides of the sink here. Um, these can be removed and um, reinserted when you're finished with the sink. You have a sprayer here uh, at the sink area. It's retractable and operated manually here for spray. And then your hot and cold is left cold, right is hot. At the end of the kitchen sink is an extension of the Corian. Just lift it up. Uh, to put it in place and then there's two lock arms here at the bottom. Just push the lock arm to lock and now the cutting board is locked in place. Uh, to release it, just lift up and push back on each arm and then lower it down in position. Uh, just above the sink here we have additional storage pl uh, place cabinets here. Um, on the inside of this cabinet door, um, all of the motorhome weight information, serial numbered uh, GVWR are all listed here, along with other notes about what paint and paint codes was, were used uh, when we painted the coach. So you can refer to those here. Um, also, there are notices up here on the left-hand side uh, about how to operate the slide out control, which is just around the corner. <clears throat> on the ceiling, you'll notice these series of vents. Uh, you have a row on this side and a row on this side, and that's because the ductwork runs all the way from the front of the coach to the rear, so that no matter which air conditioner is on, you're gonna have ventilation in the entire coach. The ones on the passenger side have a filter. Um, that filter can be removed and cleaned, and it should be removed and cleaned uh, depending on how often you use your air conditioning system. The louvers on the right-hand side can just be adjusted for the airflow movement uh, this way. Um, if you turn it this way, then the air is going to move this way. So these are adjustable because the air is coming out, but these need to be removed and they should be removed every uh, month or so. Remove the filter, uh, clean it, uh, wash it, and then let it air dry and then put it back in place. And that'll increase the performance of your HVAC system uh, in the upper duct work for the air conditioner or heat pump. 
and all of these filters need to be cleaned in the same way from front to rear. Our stainless steel refrigerator is a Norcold brand. The touch controls are up here. So the on and off for the refrigerator is here and the temperature settings are here for the upper cabinet and the lower cabinet. So if we press the upper freezer compartment, we can adjust the freezer temperature lower or I should say colder, five is the highest number. If we go to the lower compartment, then we can do the same thing. We can adjust those temperatures here. To turn it off, just press the on off button. Let's hold that down for just a second longer and it will go out. This is your freezer section. Uh, you can adjust the tray uh, to the lower level if you'd like. And the refrigerated section is here. There is a small ventilator fan here, and that is controlled up here. And of course you can adjust the shelves where you want. The interior light is here. When it's turned on, that will light up. You can see your interior light goes out when you close the door. Uh, just below the refrigerator, you'll see a louvered panel. Uh, behind this, you can remove this is your forced air furnace uh, that operates on LP. This has to re remain um, open. Uh, these louvers have to be open for the return air to go into this uh, so that you have heat throughout the coach. So don't ever block this area um, with anything. If you do need to have this uh, furnace serviced, uh, this is removable as well as this panel here. To uh, put the panel back in place, you line up the catch, top and bottom. Just to the right of the refrigerator, you have your pantry and your pantry shelves. Just to the right of the pantry, um, you have an additional uh, storage area here. So as you, as you enter the bedroom, uh, the pocket door can be operated by pressing the black uh, release down and then the door will release. And as it closes, it will lock again. And now the door is locked in the bedroom. Uh, if you want to open the door again, you have to press down on the black release mechanism and then open it back up. You can hear it lock back into place. So it's locked in place now. That's how you operate the door. Uh, above here you've got the slide out switch um, in and out, extend and retract. Before you operate this slide in the bedroom, open or closed, you'll need to put the bed in the up position so this would be the up position here. Uh, now you can operate the slide room closed just by pressing the in button here. We have to hold the in button for the slide room down until the room is completely closed. Once it's completely closed, it will automatically shut the motor off. Now we're ready for travel. To, op to open the room, it's just the reverse. You just press and hit the out button and the room will extend all the way out. Just continue to hold the button until the motor shuts off. 
if that switch here is uh, in the down position, the room, the slide room won't close um, or open. So this is just a safety switch. Um, basically, this has to be in the up position for the room to move in or out. There's an additional uh, storage area here and behind these double doors. And at the base of the bed here is a heating vent for, from the furnace uh, for the forced air heat. Um, just below that, you have the room sensor for the temperature in the room for the air conditioning and heating. Uh, below that are your lighting panel here. Uh, as you move over uh, to the bed stand, you've got uh, two USB plugs along with a 120 volt outlet, uh, along with another uh, storage compartment below, along with these overhead storage compartments above. Uh, another 120 volt outlet there if needed. The shades operate in the same way, just a manual up and down with the shades. You'll notice here that there's an exit window in case of an emergency. Um, this entire window, uh, once you follow these instructions, uh, will be removed uh, once these levers are opened, and then you can use this as an escape uh, window. Uh, that window operates the same as before, just rotating it opens and closes the window. Again, it's a manual uh, blind or shade, and you just pull it down to position it. On that end of the room, uh, you have the same nightstand with the same plug. You have your television up here. Uh, that television comes with its own remote, and the television in this bedroom has the connections up here for uh, auxiliary satellite um, and the cable here uh, is labeled uh, for the TV. Um, you also have uh, the, um, the cable plug if you want to watch cable. So that's your audiovisual cabinet for the bedroom. In addition to that, we have uh, more storage space. These are push to release push to release drawers, push in, pull out, and that releases it. Uh, if you try to pull them out, they, they're locked. So you have to push in first to release, and then you can pull it out. You'll notice here a large sticker with all the model and serial numbers of all the appliances in the coach. So if you ever forget uh, to write down a model and serial number for an appliance that was removed from the coach, you can refer back to this tag that's uh, in the closet and get the original model and serial number of what Numar installed in the coach. Up on the ceiling of the bedroom is the carbon monoxide detector and to test it to make sure that it's operational you can just press here you'll hear a tone and then a series of double tones twice uh, and that just tells you the batteries are up and that the detector is working. Just hold that for a second, you'll hear the tones. Then you'll hear another series of beeps. Once that is complete, then it shuts off and um, then you know your CO2 detector is operational. This is your smoke detector located centrally in the living room area of the coach. It says that it should be tested weekly. It, you test this one in the same way as the uh, CO2 detector. Um, you press and hold uh, the button and you'll hear a series of tones. And once the tones are uh, done, then you know the batteries are up and that the smoke detector is working. So we are in the bathroom now at the back of the coach and uh, you've got your shower. Uh, shower control is here. Um, on is just flip up. Hot and cold are labeled. Just turn it towards hot or cold. And this can be removed 
um, put back into place. It's also uh, adjustable. So to close the door, we have to unlock it first. And then we can close the door here. Um, when we're done with the shower, we just close the trifold doors back and make sure that we lock it for travel. The window operates the same way. Just twist to open and back to close. There is additional storage above here. There's a ventilation fan, just like in the kitchen, uh, to operate it. You just open the vent and the switch is on the wall here for the fan. When you're finished, just turn the fan off and close the vent. So in this coach, you have a Dometic toilet. Dometic toilet is just a uh, lever operated on the right-hand side. So the foot pedal uh, to flush would just be depressed down and the toilet automatically flush as long as the water pump is on. The water pump switch and lighting are all here. You can see it takes just a second for that to flush. Uh, your ceiling lights are here, vanity lights are here, um, your water pump here, uh, and backlighting if you want to turn your backlighting uh, to a dimmer uh, setting. Um, you also have the 120 volt a plug here that's GFCI protected. Um, you have your medicine cabinets here. You have additional storage below the sink and on the side over here. The sink is just operated cold here, hot, and then up is on. There's a handle in the front on the left side of the column you have to pull then the hood latch will be released. You lift up. There's an arm here that needs to be inserted in, in the bolt. And now we can see um, all the controls underneath on the firewall, starting here with your hydraulic pump um, and your solenoids for all the jacks, uh, the reservoir for the wiper wash solution, uh, the power brake system, and uh, this is your uh, air filter for your engine. Um, these are the condensers uh, for the HVAC uh, transmission and the engine. These are the batteries for the house and chassis. Um, coolant reservoir, air conditioning, um, coils are here for the dash heating and air conditioning. Uh, way over to the uh, side um, is the uh, reset uh, for your battery if you need to reset. That is uh, just a small blue button that you can reset here. You can see uh, the when I press the blue button, the yellow handle comes down, just reset it, just pull that back up. Uh, that's for the uh, battery reset, if it would overamp. Uh, up at the top here, you've got your transmission fluid uh, dipstick and your oil dipstick for your engine. When you're finished uh, with what's underneath here uh, for service, uh, you just lift up on the hood, move the latch out of the way, and insert it in the crop rod. If you have any questions on what the labels are uh, underneath, all of the labels um, and the Ford, uh, the Ford labels are here, and where the fuses are, uh, those are labeled here as well. So. If you want to find the position of any of the fuses, they're labeled and numbered here, and they're also uh, numbered here.
We're gonna give a quick demonstration of the headlights. Right now, the headlights are turned on uh, and the marker lights are on and that's on dim. So he's gonna turn the headlights to bright. That's our bright headlights and then he's gonna operate the turn signals left and right. There's your left turn and right turn. As we move around to the passenger side of the coach, you'll notice here uh, there's a camera here and that's our right turn camera. So uh, as we scroll through our camera settings, we can see the right hand side of the coach. Um, if we're driving or even sitting in place, if we turn our signal on for the right, this camera will also uh, show on the right side of the coach. To adjust your mirrors, you can do that from the driver's seat. Uh, if there's not enough room for adjustment uh, for your uh, view, um, there's an additional set screw here, an Allen head, that you can uh, insert, loosen, and then you can move this uh, in the tilt or uh, rotate it where you want uh, for a good view, perfect view. Um, just behind the mirror, uh, we have our carefree awning. Um, you can either open and close the awning from the inside with the manual extend and retract in the overhead above the door, or you can use this remote uh, extend and retract. So if I press the, the extend, I release that and it continues to go out. If I hit retract just momentarily, it'll stop. But if I wanna continue, I just hit extend again. You have to actually hit the extend once. You'll hear a slight tone, then you have to hit extend again for it to move. Once it reaches its full extension, it will automatically stop. You can see that the LED lights are on. Uh, you can adjust the dim or bright on your LED lights here. If you want to turn the lights off, you just press this button and the LED lights will go out. To retract the awning, just hit the retract. And that's how you operate your awning. Uh, moving back here to our steps and door, um, we have a key for the bottom lock and one for the top lock. You can lock them from the inside of the door. Here, that's your deadbolt. And here for your door handle. You can also lock them from the outside. To keep the door from swinging uh, closed, if you want it to be in the open position with the screen, there's a, a, a lever here, um, plastic lever. You just insert that in the catch here. And now our door will stay open. You see we have the screen door, which is a magnet attaching to the door here. There's a, a latch here on the screen door that you can, once you close the screen door, you can lock the door so it doesn't open. Once we have the screen door closed and latched, we can shut the slider. There's a second set of shades here uh, for this uh, window in the door. You get your door handle here with your security light above. Again, these steps will remain out if our step switch in the overhead is turned on. So even though we close the door, the steps will remain out. Our first compartment door on this side is our Xantrex inverter, which powers our 
kitchen appliances and charges our battery. We have our main um, water tank, potable water tank here. You'll notice here there's a lever uh, and you can open this up to drain that tank if you need to winterize it. Right now it's closed, so this drain is closed. Uh, but if we need to winterize, we're gonna open this lever and that's gonna release the water out of the tank uh, for winterizing. There's a manual light here. You can turn that light on and off. Same here in this compartment. You can notice the level in the water tank by the shadow of the line here. So you can actually manually inspect the water level in the tank as well as using the tank level on the monitor panel inside. Our next compartment over is the TMSC module board control for our main monitor panel upstairs. This is where all of those uh, tank levels and voltages are read, and they're displayed then in the 10-inch uh, monitor panel on the wall inside. These two controls are for the slide room. This is for the bedroom. This is for the driver's side slide out. You'll notice here another tank. Um, these are our gray and black tanks, and to the bottom of that, we have another GFCI outlet. And this is our tank heat pad, uh, and it's plugged in now and it's operating. You'll notice here, there's a couple of extra uh, tile that we put in. Uh, these are from the same lot of tile that uh, uh, is on your coach floor, so that in the event that you need to change one of the tile, uh, the color will match. These are your dual wheels uh, and your leaf suspension. Here's your O&N generator. Uh, the generator cover is here if you need to access it. It's a cover that just pops off, has push tabs into the rubber. The same way that you started the generator on the dash switch, uh, you can do here just by depressing and as time, after you're done, then of course you would just press it in the reverse to shut it off. I didn't hold it down long enough to start it, but we'll try it again. If you'll notice, there are two mini breakers here. There's the off position and the on position. If these are not turned on, the power from your generator will not go up into the coach. So just make sure if you're gonna be using your generator that these are turned on. If your generator's running, uh, but you're not getting power in the house, you wanna come out here and check and make sure that these are not tripped off. If they are, just turn them back on. Uh, oil level. You want to make sure that you have adequate oil level. Uh, refer to your owner's manual for that. Up at the top is the hour meter uh, for how many hours your generator's been running, right here, your Hobbs meter. Our last compartment door is just storage uh, with the manual light and these are 12 volt lights. Working our way about halfway back, uh, we have our side marker light, our refrigerator and furnace. Uh, if you need to access the back of the refrigerator and just turn these vertically and lift the tray out, the refrigerator is uh, compressor driven. Uh, when you're done checking the back of the refrigerator, this just slips back in place and then you push and turn them horizontally lock in place. To access the exterior entertainment center is the gray key. Just unlock, vertically unlocks. 
and then we have our, our television. Uh, the television can be moved and angled to where you like it to point. Once you're done, you can put that back in and push to put it back in place. Uh, we also have our 120 volt outlet with our charging port ports for USB. Uh, we have exterior speakers for our television entertainment center and radio. Uh, there's an additional USB plug here. You can uh, turn this on and then you will set to the mode that you like. Right now it's set to radio and tune is here. Volume is here. You can choose uh, Bluetooth if you want to Bluetooth it with another device remotely. And you can select a band for the radio here. The auxiliary input for the USB is here. You'd have to go to the mode that says auxiliary here. Then there's radio or Bluetooth. So we're going to give you a quick demonstration on the lights. These are the brake lights with the third one in the middle. You get your left turn and he will get the right going. Now he's going to start the coach and he'll put it in reverse so you can see the backup lights operating. There's the backup lights. He, uh, he left the turn signal on. Now is your left turn here. There's your marker lights on right now. If you look up at the top center, just below those three marker lights, you'll see the backup or the rear view camera there. This ladder does have a 250 pound limit. So if you're going up on the ladder, uh, keep that in mind. And you've got your, your towing hitch here um, with your seven way plug. This is where you plug in your tow vehicle uh, here. Moving to the the, back, the driver's side on the rear of the coach, uh, get another door here for your power cord. Uh, that's where you coil it up. You also have your surge guard. Um, the surge guard uh, by Southwire uh, does two things. If you'll notice a gray cord, this gray cord comes from the generator. So if you have your generator on, this will transfer the power that's coming from the generator into your coach. If the generator shuts off, it's going to use the shore cord power, which is here, to power up the coach. So it's a transfer switch uh, to go from shore cord to generator, vice versa. It's another um, manually operated light in here. Uh, this uh, storage compartment is just uh, additional storage with another manual light. You notice here we have the uh, gasoline fill. Uh, there's a couple notices here about fuels that contain alcohol um, and just want to make sure that we don't have any uh, cigarettes or any flame in this area when we open this cap. When we put the cap back in place, we want to make sure that it clicks and that tells you that it's tight. Just above our rear axle, uh, we have a water heater. Water heater service door can be open. Uh, when the water heater is on, the uh, gas valve uh, sends uh, gas into this area. When you have the flame, the flame exhaust gases come out this upper part. This is the pressure relief valve if there's too much pressure built up. When you're operating it, this door should be closed. You have another marker light here on the side. That's your bathroom window. This is your window in the kitchen. Uh, this is our uh, water and fill tank area. Um, it's also our drain for our wastewater. Uh, starting at the right, you'll see your black tank sewage rinse. So if you need to rinse your black tank, that's where you would uh, insert a hose to rinse your black tank. 
This is our freshwater fill valve. So whenever we want to fill the freshwater tank, this has to be turned in the up position to fill the freshwater tank, okay? This is where you connect the freshwater city connection. So to fill your tank, this would have to be connected to fresh water, and this would have to be turned on to fill your fresh water tank. Once you're done filling your fresh water tank, you turn this off. If your fresh water tank is full and you don't want to use out of it, you can just use the city water connection here. As long as the city water connection is turned on, you'll have water in the coach. This is a tank uh, sensor. It monitors the tank uh, here for the wastewater. This tank, it, uh, you've got the sewage tank here. You've got the uh, wastewater here. This would be gray tank, uh, black tank. To empty uh, these tanks, you have these two handles here. If I pull this handle open, I'm gonna empty my gray. If I pull this handle towards me, I'm opening the black tank or the sewage tank. Uh, before I would do that, I would want to open this up and connect my flexible hose through the floor and out to my sewage connection. Once I have that connection made, then I would open the valve handle towards me to empty the tank of my choice. When I finished, I would store the hose and put the cover back in place. In this compartment, you'll notice the water pump and the winterizing valve here. So when it comes time to winterize your coach, this plug would be removed. This would be placed into the antifreeze solution. And I would open these Valve, close, open this valve, close this valve, turn the water pump on, and that would pull the winterizing solution into the coach where I would open the uh, sink, toilet, and shower, anything that has fresh water to put the winterizing solution in those areas. Once I'm done, I would reverse the valves and turn the water pump off. This is my battery tray compartment. If I need to open and service the batteries, I pull these up. These lock the tray in place. Now I can pull the tray out towards me and service the batteries. These are lead acid batteries and the, and the, uh, the level of the solution can be checked in each cell by opening these up and visually inspecting them and then replacing the cap. When I'm done servicing the batteries, put the tray back. And lock in place. This is the LP compartment and tank. If you'll notice, there is no lock or key for this compartment for safety reasons. Uh, we want this to always be able to be opened in case the valve needs to be closed. To close the LP valve so there's no pressure going through the regulator into the coach, you would wanna rotate it clockwise. To open the valve, you wanna rotate it counterclockwise. There's an indicator here of how much LP fluid you have in your tank. All the way to the right is full, all the way to the left is empty. This is displayed in your monitor panel as well. To operate any of your slide rooms, before you open your slide room, you come to a park and you're ready to camp, you just wanna check the reveal. Make sure that this space on both sides of the slide room are even. It's about three eighths of an inch. You're going to want to have your coach in a somewhat level area uh, 
And then if these are evenly spaced, not touching each other, then you want to run your rooms out and then put your jacks down. And just do that in reverse order to put your rooms back in place.